Greetings and salutations. This is Crom the Pale, and I'm doing an item and inventory guide for all new players. It's going to be kind of a crash course on how to deal with items and what items are. I could have go over every single item in the game in detail, but it would take me about a year, and it would consist mostly of me mousing over items and going, and this is, and this is, and this is. So we're just going to do a crash course. So I've been out adventuring. My bags are all full. I'm coming into the city to get rid of items. So here's what I have. You can see right here I've got a bunch of crafting items that drop and you can see there's different rarity. You can even tell this particular one doesn't say it's a crafting item. The first few are quite obvious. They tell you they're crafting. These ones are crafting but they actually have numbers on them because they can actually be used as well as crafted. And you've got some that are just kind of odd. Way to know for certain if it's a crafting item, if you right click on it, it'll tell you you can deposit it to material storage. That means it's a crafting item. And I could individually deposit them all, but what I'm going to do is I can right click and deposit. Now, I can do that out in the field, on the map, anywhere, so that's a quick and easy way to clear up inventory space. The next item you're going to come across a lot of in this game are trophies. There are three kinds of trophies. The first set of trophies you're going to come across are junk items. These are trophies that literally have no value except at the merchant for a handful of coppers. They are stackable, but you really want to clear these out of your inventory as quickly as possible. And in a pinch, if you have no inventory space, these are the ones that you're going to drag out and you're going to delete to make space. Next, you're going to get these salvageable trophies. And salvageable, tro salvageable trophies can either be salvaged or you can actually sell them on the Black Lion Trader. Now, for the sake of this, I'm actually going to salvage these individually. And I got some items here that I can salvage. I'm going to once again deposit. This one didn't deposit because I actually have the maximum amount allowable quantity of these, which is a stack of 250 in my material storage. So I'm going to right click and sell that on the trading post as opposed to a merchant because the merchant's only going to give me seven copper. So I'm going to sell that. And once again, you can sell and purchase items on the Black Lion Trader trading post anywhere in the world. The icon's up here, or you can right-click as I did. However, to pick up items that you have purchased that are down here, my silver, I actually have to go to the Black Lion Trader, which is the icon right here, the trading post. What I'm going to do, however, is I'm going to jump over to the merchant, and I'm going to sell those junk items, the trophies. And what happens is when I go to sell, I'm going to get the option down here to sell junk, and you're going to see all these trophies disappear. Now you're going to note that there is another item at the end there that doesn't show up there. That item is this, the bandit skeleton keys. Now while they are called a trophy, they are actually a consumable item. What happens is out in the world on certain maps you're going to come across locked bandit chests, and this key is how you open that chest. When you open the chest, one of these keys is consumed. So we'll ignore that. That's an item that you're going to keep either on your character or in your bank. Of course, if it's in your bank and you come across the chest, you're not going to be able to open it. So you want to keep some of those on your character at all times if you're on a map that has the chest. The wiki will give you a listing of where you're going to find chests that have a corresponding key item that you require. Generally, it's the newer maps, the Silver Waste and the Heart of Thorns maps and the Dry Top map. Next items, what's available to drop from, you know, while you're adventuring from enemies, from achievements, from events, are going to be actual loot items. Loot items take the form of basically weapons, armors, trinkets, and these all come in multiple different rarities. Okay, everything from just your plain regular item, your blue fine item, your green uh, masterwork item, your yellow rare items, your orange exotic items. Now, there are a tier above exotic, and that's the ascended. Now, ascended items do not drop. However, ascended chests occasionally drop in PvP and World vs. World, and you can do certain achievements to acquire them or you can craft ascended weapons. Now you see ascended weapons have the same stats as legendary weapons. And you'll note that I have a legendary sword twilight equipped to my character. Anytime I mouse over an item, if I am able to equip that item, it will actually show it compared to the item I have equipped. Now you'll notice the stats for the legendary are identical to the stats for the ascended. 
legendary items are merely a cosmetic step above all other items in the game. You do not require them. They are nice to pick up if you have the time and effort. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to get rid of all of these items. However, I don't want to get rid of the exotic, and I don't want to salvage the rare. When I right-click, it gives me the option of salvaging everything up to or lower than the masterwork. So I'm going to salvage those items, and all of them have disappeared magically. The reason why they disappeared is because they went into the first bag that I had closed, because I wasn't paying attention. And so up here I've got some more crafting materials, which I can deposit. I've got luck, which I normally will consume, but I'm actually saving up this uh, exotic luck, because luck comes in various forms, and I'm giving that to my guild hall. So I'm going to save that. Ordinarily, though, you're going to consume luck the instant you get it. And again, I'm going to sell this on the Black Lion Trading Post because it's worth more there than it is at the merchant. You're also going to see I got two runes or sigils that came off the weapons. Now, I don't want to use these because they're low level. If these were superior runes, then I could use them on my gear. Since they're not, I'm just going to get rid of them as quickly as possible. Now, the rare items here, if I salvage these because they're above level 70, I stand a chance of getting an Ecto. An Ecto is a rare crafting material that has substantial value. However, the chances of getting it are, it bounces from 50-50 to, you know, 40 to 80, depending on which uh, salvage kit you use and what level of magic find you have. I find it's a little more quicker and easier to just sell them, because they get a pretty good value for them. If it didn't give me at least close to 30 silver, then I would salvage. Now you'll see here my exotic is worth over 2 gold. I could sell that or I could keep it. This unique uh, exotic, what's unique about it, is that it is actually a crafting component to another greatsword. So I'm going to hang on to that because I may want to craft that other greatsword at some point. Last item that you're going to get while adventuring out there are loot bags. Now these bags basically contain crafting materials and they're stackable. So I can sit there and I can open them, get some crafting materials, which then I can deposit. Or I can sell these on the Black Lion Trading Post. Again, their vendor value at the Merchant, 11 copper, Black Lion Trading Post, 2 silver, 29 copper. And you can see here there's a slight difference between what people are currently demanding them for and what players are wish wishing to sell them for. If I want, I could add mine to his value and sell it for the same price as him, but I have to wait until a player comes along that wants to pay that value. I can even increase my value, so I'm selling it at three silver now, which is a silver above him, meaning his units won't be sold until mine is. However, I'm going to go with the sell instantly, and I'm just going to clear them out. And you can use the Black Lighting Trading Post from anywhere in the world by clicking on it up here. Or you can right-click on the item you want to sell and I'm going to go to sell my items and I'm just going to sell some of these bags off real quick to give you an idea of they are worth a, a, a reasonable amount. Some are worth substantially more because they have multiple uses. For example, this particular item isn't just filled with crafting items, it's something that you can once again deposit to a crowd, uh, guild hall for an achievement. And of course the last thing that drops are going to be loot chests. These are chests that are usually stackable, though not always, some of them are not, and basically they contain items. So what I do with them is I usually let them stack up until I have a chance to get near a merchant, and then I'm going to open them all. And as soon as you open them all, you're going to see there's a couple crafting materials in the front, and then a whole bunch of actual items. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click again, because I know none of them are exotic or higher, I'm just going to salvage them all. I don't even need to look at them. By salvaging an item, you automatically unlock the skin for that item. So that's a quick way of, of you know unlocking skins. And you get some nice items out of that. I can deposit what deposits. You'll note that some of these don't deposit. That's because I actually already have a large quantity of them in my uh, material storage, which I'm going to show you in a moment. And I'm just going to consume luck. And with the luck you can actually consume all. 
and I'll go over consumables in a minute. And I've got a rare metal plate. Now, a rare metal plate is one of these trophies that has a secondary purpose. The rare metal plate, as you can read the text, tells you that you can trade it in for a plated weapon. Plated weapons are used in achievements. And if I go up here to achievements, you can see during the collections, and I'll go to specialized collection. So you look at the bow. The bow is an ascended staff with selectable stats that you can acquire through the achievements. The achievement is I have to collect all of these items and one of the items I need is a machine staff. To get the machine staff, I need to get the plated uh, item to trade in for that. Now, lastly, you're going to come across our selectable boxes. And I've got one here where if I open this box, it actually is going to give me one item and then ask me to choose what other item that I want. And this particular one is called a chest of loyalty and it's a daily login reward. The daily login rewards are very useful items. Every time you log in once a day you get a reward for doing so. And you can actually check out your daily login reward and where you are on this table. So each of these are rewards that you get for logging in and they go one after the other. You can note these little circles, that's actually cycles of the moon. So when you hit the final one, full moon, you get the chest of loyalty. There are many different things you can choose to pick from the chest of loyalty. Uh, a vast number of people will tell you to pick the plentiful laurels. Laurels are a currency that is only acquirable via logging in. So that is a good idea to go with that. Now, ascended crafting materials are a good idea if you plan on crafting ascended, uh, ascended weapons and armor. Legendary crafting materials, if you are a diehard pushing for a specific legendary, it's not a bad choice. The downside is you might get something that's not applicable to the legendary you're crafting. This grand chest of experience, do not get, never ever select that. Now, I know because I've been doing a lot of Oops. logins that I've got a lot of laurels so I'm not going to bother getting laurels I'm actually going to get the ascended crafting chest and this is a consumable that once I click on it it takes effect I permanently get that 2% gold find and then I'm going to open up and I'm going to get some crafting materials this particular crafting material unfortunately you can't deposit I have to put that in my bank this one however I can instantly deposit so let's go take a look at my bank. Now, the last thing you're going to come across a huge quantity of in-game are consumables. And consumables come in three or four different varieties. The first set is ones that grant you a buff or a boost of some kind. So these are potions, food, and maintenance items. And these will give you an instant boost to one of your stats. You can also get experience or magic find boost. There's ones that will actually grant you an instantaneous level if you're below level 80 or a portion of a level if you're below level 80. And then there's more of these luck. And you note that when they're in, in, in the bank, I can't consume these. It won't allow me. You have to take consumables out of your bank to actually consume them. The next thing you're going to find are you're going to find consumables that change your appearance. These are usually just holiday event items like a Halloween tonic. Some of them are endless so that you can use it over and over again. This is a miniature one that when I use it, my character suddenly becomes very, very tiny. In fact, I am so tiny right now that if I spawn a miniature, which is a mini pet that follows me around, you can see the mini pet pretty much as tall as I am. In fact, I'm going to use a mini pet that's taller than me. So there. Here's Chrome next to his mini pet, and my mini pet is actually larger than I am. Now this doesn't last forever. There's a duration of 14 minutes, 15 minutes unusually. Other consumables you're going to come across are silver waste shovels. These are a consumable that once you find them, you have a double click feature or use to them. Similar to the bandit key, only this one you have to double click to make use of it. You've got some seeds that are only applicable to world versus world. When you go to world versus world, you're going to want siege. And then you have crafting recipe books, which teach your crafting uh, skill recipes that are used to craft items. And lastly, you're going to find some 
joke items. This is a kite that literally all it does, similar to the tonic, is once used, I actually am now flying a kite. So I can go fly a kite. Now, there are thousands and thousands of other items in the game, from items that will consume other items. There's items used for gathering. There's other items that will open chests in various locations. There's different levels of salvage kits. There's different types of food and consumables. There's upgrade components. There's so many other items in here. It would take forever to go through them all. What I can show you quickly, however, is the material storage. So these are all the different types of crafting materials. And you see they've divided between common ones, fine ones, rare crafting materials, and there's ascended crafting materials. And these are gemstones. Gemstones are used in your trinkets and accessories and occasionally are used in uh, uh, certain recipes for runes. Um, you've got cooking materials and you've got festive ones. So these are the Halloween ones and the Winter's Day ones. The last thing I'm going to show is the wardrobe. The wardrobe is the means by which you can actually uh, change the appearance of your character. Now you can access this from either the bank or from your hero tab. If I go into my hero tab and click wardrobe, I have to uh, end my transformation. I can actually change the appearance of any piece of armor that I have with one that I have unlocked in my wardrobe. And we do that via transmutation charges. The transmutation charges you acquire through the daily logins and through PvP and World vs. World reward tracks. So I can pick a completely different look for my character and it'll be something completely customized or I can pick something preset. It all depends. I can make myself look really, really badass or crazy. And then, of course, I can go in and I can die these. Once you unlock a die, it is unlocked on your account. So, uh, let's see. That's make Chrom think today. So, a die is a consumable item. I'll show you that. So there's a nice pink crumb. I don't think I'll do that. However, if I want to see every possible uh, item in the game, the wardrobe is a good place to do it. Well, I mentioned dyes too. Uh, dyes come in a variety of items. You can get some jubilation packs, uh, celebratory packs, or unidentified. Unidentified die, when you click on it, it will give you a die of a random nature. So the wardrobe, real quickly, will show me all of the items all of the different skins for every weight class. I can look at uh, weapon skins. So if I look at two-handed, I'm going to look at the great swords because I currently have a great sword equipped. I can look at every skin just by clicking on it and wield. And so I could take a couple hours and literally go through and click and say, and this is, and this is, because there is a almost infinite number of skins in this game. But that's your crash course on inventory management and items. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Crumb the Pale and I hope to see you in the game.